Everything's fine. Mm. Jenny's fine. The podcast is fine. Luis is fine. The magic is fine. Everything is fucking fine. Everything's fine. Except for the fact <laughs> that my computer decided to be evil and delete our Halloween episode. Yes. Which I didn't realize until I went to go edit it and couldn't find a file. So here we are recording on All Hallows Eve and this will come out as a post Halloween treat yeah we uh you know life lifed a little too hard this week yeah. this past week so it was just like why not add something else shit happens it's like we've never done this before but it's fine because if people can make people i mean disney can make <laughs> if they can make christmas last until the second week of january we can go out a couple of days for Halloween. There we go. It's like a nice little apartif <laughs> of the spooky season going into Thanksgiving. <laughs> Just a little yum yum yum. A what? A num, num, num. You heard me. Pay attention to my words. <laughs> those weren't even words. Num, num, num. Yeah, those aren't words. Those are sounds. But yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. We're just recording this. And next year, we'll actually get it out on Halloween. Yeah, we promise we'll we'll get it out. Well, thankfully, we get to record this episode late because we get to thank Myra for our special little spooky light up ghost. Ah, He's so cute. He really is. We saw him and we're like, oh, that looks like our ghost scene on our thing. It does. So, once this episode comes out, we will announce our little ghosty, Gilbert the Ghost! He's super cute. He is super cute. You just want to pinch his little ghost cheeks. (laughs) I want to figure out if we can, like, put the martini glass somehow (gasps) on him. We'll have to see what we can do. Yeah. We'll play around with it. We'll definitely post a picture. Yes. Eventually, I'd like to get a full ghost with the martini glass and those, like, customized LED light strip things. Oh, yeah. That'd be super cool. Super, super cool. Super, 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 super cool. So thank you so much for our little Gilbert light-up ghosty. He's adorable. Yes, he is. So speaking of spooky season, Jenny had... (laughs) Jen had something particularly horrifying happen to her. And I just got a phone call and a picture of Jenny with half of her front teeth. (laughs) I'm like, what is happening right now? So I definitely got to go into spooky season early because I had to go to the dentist, which I absolutely hate. The ultimate spooky place to be, the dentist. I hate going to the dentist. I've only had traumatizing experiences with the dentist. Um, luckily everything is okay. Um, it just lo- gave me a jump scare when I opened my <laughs> Snapchat. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? I'm like, who are you MMA fighting at work? Your teeth look like that. Patient knocked out my front tooth. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, like, are you doing, like, fight club? <laughs> Recreation facility? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Patients get combative. We've actually had a patient get combative the other day, so... Oh, you know, it's it fine. happens. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's Everything fine. fine. Get out <laughs> of my head. I said it first. 
bitch we said it at the same time or sure, whatever <laughs> but anyways yeah luckily i didn't have to have a root canal um i have to go back in a couple of weeks to get the permanent crowns on which will feel so much better oh yeah so if it sounds like i'm talking funny or with a lisp it's probably because i'm still not used to these temporary crowns no one say anything or i'll fight you (laughs) (laughs) it's fine i know i talk funny right now it's really bothering me but it's funny but no one talk about it Just laugh behind her back. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. But yeah, so. <laughs> definitely, definitely got spooky season started early. Okay, so with all of that, this is our post Halloween spectacular campfire stories. Of some delicious stories that we found on the internet and had some lovely viewers send in. And remember, if you like this, go ahead and give us a review on Spotify. That is the very best way to help us grow the podcast. If you want to see all of our cool little links in our cool little link tree, you can find that over on our Instagram. Our Instagram is WTF is that pod. Our link tree will take you directly to our Spotify page, to our Patreon, to our Amazon wish list. Over on our Patreon, you can get access to an exclusive Discord chat. You get some special one-on-one time with Jen and I, some extra episodes, extra long versions of the show, which is essentially just an uncut version, unless we need to cut some names, but (laughs) of the show that really show the craziness that goes on behind the scenes. All of that is over on our link tree, which is at our Instagram, WTF is that pod. All right, are you ready to tell some uh, spooky stories? We decided that I'm going first, right? Correct, Amundo. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Like <laughs> I couldn't tell if you were actually gonna finish that. I wasn't sure, and then I just decided <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I could hear that you weren't entirely sure either. I was processing. <laughs> I'm like, are we gonna do it? We're gonna do it. Let's do it. Correct, Amundo. <laughs> All right, so I actually posted this on Facebook in a certain, like, you know, those groups that you can join. Oh, yeah. I, okay. Okay. I really love looking through some of those groups sometimes. Right. There are some wild ones. There really are. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. If you haven't done it, I highly suggest just going into Facebook and hitting the groups button and just typing in something random and seeing what comes up. (laughs) Because it's like porn. There is something for everyone. (laughs) That wasn't the comparison I would have used, but okay. That is my favorite comparison. (laughs) Did you like that? Was that good for you? Can we do it again? (laughs) Thank you, sir. May I have another? Okay, get back to your story. Like I said, I posted this on one of those uh, spooky groups on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And so Kayla was one to comment and this is kind of a funny one. Ooh, I love when they have a twist to them. Right. Also, thank you, Kayla. Yeah. So she says when she was about twelve, her uncle told her a spooky campfire story that they were actually around a campfire. That makes it even better. It gives that sense of realism. Right? Love it. Ten so out of much. ten for vibes so far. <laughs> He said when he was younger, his parents both left for work before him and his brother left for school. He was eating breakfast and watching cartoons like usual, getting ready for the day when he started to hear strange noises coming from the basement. (gasps) We hate a basement. (laughs) Hate a basement. I don't care if it's a finished basement that has bedrooms in it. It's always creepy. Yeah. I, I don't like basements. They always give... It's, it's the enclosure. Like, it's the enclosement part for me. And the lack of, like, natural light. Yeah. No matter what you put in there, no matter how full of light it is, 
Yeah, it's still, you can tell that it was a basement. The only type of basement that I'm okay with is, like, the houses by the beach. Yeah. Where technically the basement is the ground floor. Yeah. Those are okay. They open up to a landscape. Yes. Yeah. Where it's literal land and you have light still. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But, ugh. Yeah. No. Basements, no. No, no. Nay, nay, says I. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> I was waiting for your nay, nay. <laughs> I don't know why, but nay, nay has been making a comeback into my vocabulary recently. It really has. <laughs> Alrighty. So he said that the house was old and sometimes you'd hear the usual creaks and groans, but this sounded different. Mm. (laughs) He didn't have the courage to go and investigate it and just tried to shrug it off, kept going about his day, but it finally wore him down to know what the noises were. Especially if it's happening like more than once. I think a couple of like I think a couple of little groans and moans in the house, especially an old house, you can kind of brush it aside. But at some point you have to go, okay, this is problematic. Yeah. He said the basement was super creepy and hated going down there, but finally decided it had to be done. He slowly snuck down the stairs and the noises continued the whole way down. He made it to the bottom and peeked around, saw a figure, and screamed and freaked out. The figure started to scream also. Turns out, his mom had stayed home that day and didn't tell him. Oh, no! (laughs) She was just doing their laundry. (laughs) That's adorable. That's so wholesome. Right? (laughs) I like the buildup, though, like, because of course it was the basement. Of fucking course it was. Oh, my goodness. The way this was written, I loved it. But it was just, I laughed out loud and I was at work when I read that. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's just like, what the fuck is wrong with her? (laughs) So thank you, Kayla, for that story. Okay, so this one was sent to me by my friend Courtney. Courtney is also a sensitive Ooh, okay. Yes. I love talking to her about ghosty things. It's fun. (laughs) Okay, so this is from Courtney. It says, I was a kid, maybe seven, and my bathroom shower wasn't working at the time, so I had to use my parents. Their shower was a tub that had one of those glass sliding doors attached instead of a curtain. It was, like, those sliding doors. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the kind of like the ones that I have in my bathroom. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so they were frosted, so you couldn't totally see out, but you could see figures. I don't like that. I can picture that perfectly because, like, that's the shower that I had growing up as a kid. So Same. I can imagine exactly how that looks. Same. And I still don't like it to this day. I used to get so spooked taking a shower in that because I'm just like... And the fact... Every little thing that mm-hmm. moved, I was like, what was that? The fact that my parents would still come in to the bathroom... When I was taking a shower when I was little. Oh. And that's like, fun. And you're yeah. like, is this a person or is this and something then, else? Exactly. The frosted pain, like, mm, no, was not fun. Nay, nay. <laughs> okay. So Courtney goes on to say, I was showering in there one day, just getting done shampooing my hair, and I hear a little kid say, Sissy? I start talking to Ivor, saying, yeah, what's up, with my eyes closed because I was rinsing my hair. Then I remember, Ivor is like seven or eight months. He can't talk. Mm. I crack my eyes open, and I see what looks like a three-year-old standing there. Mm. Ironically, it looked like Ivor when he was three. Mm. And I quickly open the door, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm. I don't like that. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but my question is, did they live at the same house when Ivor was three and it's like a time slip? Okay. Yeah, I can see that thinking. Because I don't know a ghost to, or like a, not a ghost. An entity. 
Yeah, an entity to show a future-looking version of someone of somebody you know. that you haven't met yet, and you think after the fact, oh, they kind of looked like my sibling when they were that age. Yeah, you know. So I wonder if it's it, a time slip because that would make more sense to me. Yeah, that's probably the only thing that I could explain it as. Um, unless she's a little more sensitive than she thinks, and it's like a flash of something. Yeah, or this is where we're going to get really hippy dippy. Time <laughs> isn't time isn't like a straight line. Yeah. It's circular. So what if they're a lot more mentally connected and they were able to like transmutate bond almost? Yeah. Between the three year old Ivor and seven year old Courtney? Maybe. And it just ended up looking like a embodiment? Maybe. That would be like the only other thing that I could really think of other than time slip. I don't know. But either way, that's spooky. It is super spooky. Like, ugh. And the fact that you just think to respond. Yeah. Like, you you're don't just like, yeah. Think, yeah, it's after the fact that you're like, wait a second. <laughs> Yeah, there have been a lot of times where I think I hear my name in the shower. Uh-huh. And I'm like, wait, I'm home alone. Or I'll stop and, like, try to figure out, like, if my mom's there or whoever. Ooh. And, like, then I don't hear anything else. I'm just like, okay. But I also do listen to loud music when I shower, so. That's true. That's I, probably why. I get, this one's a little bit creepy. Um, <laughs> but because we are sensitive, I tend to attract more kids here because yeah. I do have kids myself and I'm a pretty warm person. And so I for, uh, attract a ton of kids. There's always a ton of kids spirits around. Yeah. And so there's been a couple of times where I've heard mommy, mommy, only to then remember that my kids are not home. Yeah. That's always fun. Mm. Where I'm like, oh, yes, there are no actual physical children here. <laughs> but yeah, 10 out of 10 spook. So she actually sent in another story with her first story. So are you ready for that? It's a twofer. Yeah. You didn't like my song? No. Well, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked you? You did. You just did. I take it back. <laughs> Anyways, here's on to the second story. <laughs> okay. My second story was right after my great grandmother died. We were up at my grandmother's house for the funeral. I lived in San Diego at the time and was about eight ish. The adults were in the living room and I was walking into the kitchen to grab something to drink when something out of the corner of my eye looked funny. For context, my grandmother's house was built in the 50s when they built the formal dining and living rooms off of the actual living and dining room. The weird thing in the corner of my eye was in the formal dining room. I turned my head to look, and there were all of my great-grandparents sitting at the table. My great-grandmother, who had just passed, was at the head of the table. Her husband, who I never got to meet, was at her right. And my grandfather's parents were on her left. Um... They all turned to look at me. Gaga, the great-grandmother who had just passed, said, Oh, hey, Courtney. I blinked in disbelief, and they were gone. I was the only grandchild to have met them all except for Gaga's husband, who died when my grandmother was in her late 20s. Um. Yeah. That's freaky. Yeah, especially when it's one that you haven't even seen before. Like, in person before. Yeah. I mean, that's happened to me. But, but... it's different when it's all of them together yeah that's the thing yeah that that that's interesting that's a lot that is a lot wow especially like the great grandmother who just passed at the head of the table yeah how fucking symbolic that's interesting oh my gosh wow that's a fun one thank you for those courtney yeah those were a uh, great spook 
10 out of 10 spook 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 we didn't rate the first one uh let's go back so the first one like it's like a two out of ten two three, out of ten spook like two out of two and a half two and a half a spook a but, spook but wholesomeness 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 wholesome yeah because like that is the ultimate child being afraid of like, the dark. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10 wholesome. Yes. Low spook, high wholesome. <laughs> Balance. Balance. But, the, but these ones, 10 out of 10 spook. 10 out of 10, yes. Because uh, dead people are always spooky. And it's so funny because we constantly talk and see them or like hear from them. Oh, I love when people are like, oh, you're a medium. That must mean you're not afraid of ghosts. Right? Uh, I'm like, no, I'm shaggy. <laughs> I am shaggy. <laughs> it scares the shit out of me. Really does. All the time. Yeah. It's taking me a lot to not be like, huh, every time, <laughs> every time one pops up. Because sometimes I'm just like, okay, why do I feel like there's a wagon passing by right now? I'm like, oh, okay. We're trying to be shown something. Do you know how often Great. I have to try to ignore things at work? That's fun. Yeah. It's not. I work <laughs> at, I work <laughs> in a be wrong. <laughs> I work in a hospital where people have passed and I mean it's not really common for them to die in our hospital, considering that's not what they're there for. Like but they it should still be stable. Happens, people die it everywhere, does. every day. And there's a lot of transient things too, actually, that comes in and out. It's a high energy area, so it, it makes is. sense that things linger there. Yeah, and it's, it's just I don't know. Today, someone actually started screaming in my ear. But it was only coming in as, like, a uh, high-pitched, like, noise. Oh, the buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just hurting. And I was like, ah, okay. Thanks. I hate that. I'm like, we need to find a frequency that we can both agree on because this is not it. Yeah. This I'm is like, not the business. I'm like, either use your words or leave me alone. Or find another way to because this yeah. is not working. This is not how we're going to do this. Well, that was a lot of fun. So thanks, Courtney, for that spooktacular stories. That was grammatically incorrect, but oh well. We're going to continue to move on. <laughs> so our next story is actually kind of a legend from my hometown. Ooh. This was a story told to me by my adoptive father. Uh-huh. And he would tell it to pretty much anyone and everyone he could. Um, But, I mean, it's a good kind of spooky story Ooh, okay so there are these train tracks in san antonio that apparently a bus full of kindergartners that's so specific why is it specifically <laughs> kindergartners you'll you'll realize why in a minute so specific <laughs> it stalled on railroad tracks no and they couldn't get out in time. No. And a train came and hit them. No. Yeah. So the bus driver and all those little babies unfortunately passed away. But again, the fact that <laughs> they had... It couldn't just be elementary school children. No, it was specifically little teeny tiny baby kindergartners. Yeah. That were killed. <laughs> Dead baby kindergartners. <laughs> I don't know, man. I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't come up with the story. <laughs> this was just told to me over and over as a child. Okay, Look, I'm telling you as I heard it, lady. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Get it together. Anywho, go on about the dead kindergartners. Oh my god. We got the dead kindergartners, right? Okay. Well. Legend has it that if you go and park your car on these railroad tracks, because trains don't come through there anymore. Okay. Um, like, I appreciate them being safe, I guess. Yeah. This legend. <laughs> well, I mean, this area doesn't get used a lot anymore, so oh, gotcha. it's understandable. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if you go and park your car on these train tracks uh -huh. and put it in neutral, and if you put some baby powder 
or like flour okay on your trunk Mm -hmm. it's supposed to your and you get in your car you're pushed forward no (laughs) and once no no once you get out of your car and you go to the back of your car to your trunk or your bumper wherever you put the flour or the baby powder yeah yeah you see one big set of handprints for the bus driver and then teeny tiny handprints that's so sad. Of for dead the, kindergartners. For the babies. Because oh, they're trying to get gosh. you off the tracks. Oh. They're trying to get you off the tracks so you don't end up like them. That's so sad. Okay, so I've heard this legend like multiple times, but like over multiple different places. Yeah. And to be quite honest, I did end up doing research on it because... This was going to be my first topic for the hometown episode, Uh but it was just a little too short, Um, so I figured Halloween would be perfect for it. There you go. But it wasn't San Antonio, Texas, where those kids died. It was, I believe, Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, That's why I was thinking, I'm like, I know this is a specific story, like, not from Texas. Like, I've heard it before. No, there has been no record of a school bus getting hit by a train in Texas, Um, or at least in my area of Texas. But what an easy story to tell someone if you just have train tracks around where nothing happens on Yeah, but the crazy thing is, is that I have seen the handprints firsthand. No, no. I don't know. I think there's so, some sort of science behind it. There's got to be. Well, That's... people say that it's like leftover from your handprints. Oh, maybe. You know, that but... scared the shit out of me. <laughs> there's like, we live not that close to a big road, but close enough that if they rev their engines, it can be a little ridiculous. It's so annoying. But. But yeah, I could see that. That makes sense to me. So, but at the same time, I've also seen the child-sized handprints where oh. no child has touched my car or the car that we've been in. So mm. it's like, how do we explain those? I don't know. Maybe we should go and do an experiment. We'll go there, put the flower on, and then we'll take a picture of it as soon as we're done with the flower. Like there putting it on the car. Yeah. And then take a picture after. Yeah. That'll be fun. There we go. <laughs> but yeah. 10 out of 10. Thanks. So on to our final story of this post Halloween spooktacular event. Ooh. This is from. Ooh, as I hit the table. Okay, so this story is sent in from one of our listeners, Brent. So thank you so much. Oh. Are you okay? Yes. (laughs) It's a lot lower than I thought it was going to be. Anyways, I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) Louise is fine. The magic is fine. It's all good. (laughs) This story that Brent sent in is a bona fide campfire story people have probably heard either a version of this or aspects of it around because it's like playing a game of telephone sometimes yeah. with campfire stories yeah because you tell them at a campfire like at a summer camp yeah so they get told over and over by different generations of campers so if you add in a weird thing yeah. that thing's gonna stick i mean that, you yeah say that's something how, wrong that's how legends get made and passed down and yeah i get it oh yeah so this campfire story is called the hook slash the hook handed killer okay i think i know where this is going okay here we go are you ready okay last summer a girl who lives near here was getting ready to go out for the evening when she heard a strange report on the radio the reporter said that a manic mass murderer had escaped from a nearby prison Watch out, they said, for a man with a hook for a hand. It's always a manic mass murderer. 
with a hook for a hand. Yeah, like, what did he do to get the hook for a hand? I have so many questions. What prison allowed him to keep his hook? Right? Right? At <laughs> what point do you just go, no, you just have a wrist? Yeah. Like, what? Or, you know, actually give him a prosthetic, you know, something. Literally anything else would be better than a hook hand. Yeah. Like, what prison? Did he, like, have to... Or did he not have one and then, like, broke in somewhere else to steal his hook hand and then escape? I just imagine <laughs> it's, like, um, I imagine, like, Guardians of the Galaxy when they're breaking out of the prison. Oh. And Quill has to go and get his Walkman. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> that's what he did. That's go, what he did? To go get his hook hand. Okay. It's an emotional attachment. You think you can be a mass psych manic mass murderer without a hook hand? Apparently not. It's his literally all he has going for him. It's literally his MO. Literally. <laughs> literally. <Ew>. Anyways. <laughs> he was known to be crazy and dangerous. The police asked for everyone's help and reporting anything out of the ordinary. The girl thought it was strange but wasn't too worried. She was too excited about the evening ahead. Her boyfriend was coming to get her so that way they could go out to a movie. A few minutes later, he pulled up in his car and she bounded out the front door to meet him and start their evening of fun. On the way to the movie theater, they drove down a dark, twisty road. They heard a thump on the passenger side of the car, then a rattle near the front tire. The girl and her boyfriend were startled. I don't think I hit anything, he said. I wonder what that noise could have been. The boyfriend was worried that something was wrong with the car. He wanted to pull over and check things out, but the girl was worried that they would be late for the movie. She tried to talk him out of stopping. They started to argue as he parked on the side of the road. She begged him to just keep driving. As they sat there, him explaining that he'd only be a minute, they heard another thump on the side of the car. That's strange, the boyfriend said. We're no. not even moving. No. No. <sighs> No. <laughs> Drive away. <laughs> the girl began to feel nervous. She asked again if they could go to the movie. Now as much because she was scared of the strange noises in the dark, deserted road as anything else. Her boyfriend again said he'd just be a minute. And just as he started to get out of the car, they heard another thump and a long screeching like nope. the sound of metal no. scraping on metal. No. Drive that car away. Get out of there as fast as you can. The girl and her boyfriend looked at each other and without another word, they put the car in drive and hit gas. They made the rest of the drive to the movie theater in record time, sitting silently waiting. When they got to the theater, the girl had started to feel... Ugh, when they got to the theater, the girl had started to feel a bit foolish for getting spooked over some silly noises. I'm so sorry, she said to her boyfriend. I don't know what I was so upset about. He forgave her and they got out of the car laughing at their silly fight until the girl closed her car door. One look and she was frozen in fear, terrified, as she saw a long scrape on the passenger side of the car leading to a metal hook hand no still lodged in the handle of the car door no the girl ran straight inside and called the police but after weeks of combing the woods they never found the hook handed killer they say he still wanders around these parts and people have seen a man with a hook hand stalking through the woods late at night nope <laughs> Dios la bendiga. Bye. <laughs> no. It's that same thing as like a creepy pasta where it has some level of believability. Have you, like the have, odds aren't zero that this would happen, but I know. And the thing is, is okay. Have you seen that uh, TikTok guy? Uh, the Latinos, Latinos against spooky <gasps> shit. I love Latinos against spooky shit. Uh huh. Dios la bendiga. Adios. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Latinos against spooky shit. Yeah. 
It's no. so good. Bye-bye. It's... You go and drive away. You don't be the stupid white person and get out of the car. And I love that they pulled over and were debating about right? it. Like, oh. Right? Why? Just go. No. Keep going. Just go. You're Don't like, stop. oh, we're stopped and there's still thudding sounds. Let me get out of this safety of my car nope. and check. What do you mean? Nope. No. Just drive. That's enough for me, dog. <laughs> 10 out of 10 spook. Yes. All of our Halloween episodes have been 10 out of 10 spook. No, well, they haven't. Three. They, all, they all got 10 out of 10s. They did all get 10 out of 10s, but not in the spook <laughs> One was category. For wholesome. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. This was our post Halloween spooktacular event. Woohoo! Woohoo! And now, would you like to spook us some more with a spooky ooky? Perplooky fact? Yeah. All right. Are we ready for my creepy fact? No, but you're gonna tell me anyways. Yes, I am. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my thought process for today's creepy fact. As an ADHD, I love a thought process. <laughs> so it started out as this is our Halloween, you know, post Halloween spooky episode, right? Love it, yes. Okay, well, that's where we started out at. Now, I'm from Texas. What is Texas known for when it comes to spook? Oh, I Texas was say chainsaw big things. <laughs> I mean that too. <laughs> Start that again because my head went. <laughs> went. I heard the beginning half of the sentence. What is Texas known for? Big things. I know. I know the answer. Big things. Me. I know. I know, teacher. I know the answer. <laughs> Didn't even bother finishing listening to the rest of the question. Obviously, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Obviously. Did you get this? Did you get where I was going, though, after I said the spook? I just. Okay, great. But, it, but my head was already going. <laughs> and I'm like, I need to get it out. It was. Or I'm going to start laughing for no reason. <laughs> Do you know? What chainsaws were originally made for? It's not rhetorical. To make the, to make the life of the everyday lumberjack easier. No. No. No, you poor naive child. Poor unfortunate. <laughs> so sad. The chainsaw was originally created for childbirth. Oh, okay. I thought like maybe amputation, which nope. I could also see that. But that's worse. Yep. <sighs> I mean, if it makes you feel any better, they they weren't as big as they are today. You I don't know if it makes it better be. or worse significantly smaller <laughs> like significantly like comically smaller not comically no it is smaller but not as small as you they think they didn't come in going <laughs> no <laughs> all fine madam ring ding 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 yeah everything's fine Please try not to scream, ma'am. <laughs> it's completely natural. <laughs> Her husband was never the same after that. <laughs> Anyways, I guess thanks for that. You're welcome. Is that what you say to that? Yeah. When you... Okay. Did you enjoy my thought process, though, getting there? 
I did. I liked that little mental journey that we went on with you. Great. I'm glad. Usually it's me explaining my mental journey. So Yours is like, terrifying, though. Mine's at least not. made sense. It's like Laura like Gilmore, monkey, monkey, underpants. It all makes <laughs> sense to me. You just got to keep up with the logic. All right. And with that, if you liked whatever the fuck was going on in this episode, head Pure on over. chaos. <laughs> Head on over to our Instagram. Our Instagram houses all of our fun little pictures and announces when our episodes come out. It is also home to our pretty little link tree. Our link tree will take you to our Spotify page. Liking and reviewing the Spotify is the best way to help us grow. Also, over on our link tree is a link to our Patreon Our Patreon has a special Discord, full-length episodes, and all of those good little goodies are over there, and there are different tiers for all of those. Finally, you can find our Amazon store if you would like to get us a couple of little goodies for the pod lab. You can find that over there, and as always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. 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 Bye.